Welcome back to OMFG.FM's look at World of Warcraft Cataclysm. Part 2 of the Westfall chain, I guess. The CSI Westfall chain. And we're back here at Two Shoot Lou. We just found out what was going on at the, uh, the Jongalode mine. And uh, Two Shoot Lou, he doesn't want to know what we found out. No, sir. What he wants to do... He just wants to be done with it, so he's got one more bit of information for us. He says some thugs have come into town recently, and uh, he, has, he has no idea what they're up to, but it can't be anything good, and he overheard them saying some things that might interest us in, uh, in these murders and whatnot, so we're going to go eavesdrop on these thugs and see what they have to say. And you'll, hope you'll, excuse me, I'm, I'm kind of sick. This uh, this evening, I woke up and uh, I, I I honestly feel terrible, but uh, we got to do this because you guys want it and that's what we're here to do. So let's go ahead. We're gonna eavesdrop on these guys. All right. Did you did you meet her? Yep, she's for real. But keep that on the DL, yo. She wanted me to tell you lugs that she appreciates the job that we did for her on the Furl Bros. Gave me a pile of gold to split with you. Did you see her face? Is it really... Whoa! What do we have here? Looks like we have ourselves an eavesdropper, boys. Yeah. Only one thing to do with lousy good-for-nothing eavesdroppers. Die! No, multi-shot, arcade shot, and game over. I guess I, I beat him with the axe, but either way. I guess it all works the same. All right, now let's go back to Two Shoe Lou. Uh, well, never mind. Apparently, Two Shoe Lou is dead as well. Let's see, Horatio Lane is here, and he's saying that we are dealing with an organization here, rookie. You don't just kill the richest bum in Westfall in broad daylight and leave no witnesses. Someone with a lot of power is behind these murders. And uh, all right, complete quest. Let's see, shakedown at the Saldines. All right, so this is basically what's going on here. He's gonna, he wants us to go to the Saldine farm, as they've been here for quite a while, and they definitely should know something about what's going on. So we're gonna go try to talk these uh, Saldine folk into telling us what they know. All right. Do, do, do. Oh, hey, overpowered hunter blink for the win. All right, we're now all the way across the map of Westfall, and uh, we're here to find out what's going on at the Saldines, and the Saldine apparently says that uh, Horatio Lane is a good-for-nothing scumbag, and he's as dirty as his under... Well, you should probably take a bath or something then. Dirty underwear and whatnot, Jesus. All right, uh, he wants us to get out of Westfall and whatnot, and uh, we didn't. But uh, basically what was going on there, you'll notice that like, it, uh, I, t I accepted a quest, and then I came back, and then now I'm like, he has a quest again, and he, he, we've skipped basically three or four quests in this time to where we are now, because the quests don't have anything whatsoever to do with the actual storyline. Uh, but because we helped these guys, they let us get back on track of the storyline, uh, by giving us their thanks, and their thanks is uh, basically they're gonna they're gonna send us to their daughter Hope, who uh, works at Sentinel Hill and is very close with the homeless of Westfall, and uh, they trust her, and so she may have overheard something, and so she might be able to help, and uh, she's gonna give us a little background story on Hope. And uh, it says about four years ago in the dead of the night, a little girl walked into the, our farmhouse and collapsed on the floor. Nobody had a clue as to her identity. The poor little thing had no recollection of who she was or where she came from. She was truly a lost soul. Soon after, we adopted the little girl and named her Hope. So, there we go. And that's she named her Hope because that's what she represented. So, what we're going to have to do now is we're going to go down to... 
Sentinel Hill here with our overpowered Hunter Blink. And we're going to go talk to Hope Saldine. And uh, let's see, she's going to... Yes, we have to give her some Westfall stew, and then she's going to turn around and she's going to give us the Westfall stew back. And she's going to tell us to go... Um, she's going to tell us to go feed the hungry and the hopeless of Westfall. Basically, there are a bunch of homeless people around Westfall now because of the dealings going on in Stormwind with King Barry and Ren spending a whole bunch of cash on the war efforts against the Horde. And now, we are, we have to go feed uh, 20 homeless people around Sentinel Hill and Westfall. And uh, this quest really annoyed me because they were all centralized in one location. And uh, it took me like an hour to find them. And uh, when I did finally find them, there were only 16 of them. And so I had to wait forever to feed them again because they get this three minute debuff uh, that won't let that they you won't let you feed them again for like three minutes and it's just absolutely terrible it's absolutely annoying really uh, but there you go that's the act of feeding them and whatnot I kind of walked around to see if I could find any more people um, and I just I couldn't and so I just didn't worry about it anymore I just waited until the debuff was gone and then I fed them again and then and that was that I don't think you actually see the act I'm pretty sure I I hunter blinked back to Sentinel Hill yep and uh, oh yes I remember this I forgot when I turned the quest I forgot I wasn't recording and so yeah basically it really didn't have much it just said she appreciates all we've done and she wants me to go talk to Gyron Stout Mantle Shout Mantle, one of the two. I don't know if it's Stout or Shout. I have a terrible memory. I'm sorry. What can I do for you? All right. <clears throat> and Gyron wants us to go find Agent Kiernan. And Agent Kiernan is uh, is an agent of SI7, which is like the Stormwind version of the CIA or the FBI, I guess. And uh, and yeah, he wants. To, basically, what's going on is the, this guy named Helix Gearbreaker who's kind of like uh, this boss type guy of, of like a, a mafia type Boy, scenario I guess and uh, SI7 believes him to be at least connected in some way to the organization that murdered the uh, murdered two shoot Lou and the Furbro family and old Blanche poor old Blanche uh, and she says that Helix is the one behind the Knoll attacks and uh, He's inside this little tower here, and what she's going to do, she's going to give us a little SI7 potion that makes us invisible. And what we're going to do is we're going to go inside this little tower. She's going to cover us from the tree and snipe anyone that, that comes near, although we didn't really need her help. That's all right, though. Uh, and we're going to go find Helix Gearbreaker. Safe travels. And we are going to find out what is going on there. And see if he really does have any connection to the people that are murdering the Furrow Bros. Hey, Tornado, it's like Oklahoma. Alright. Uh, part 3 should be up in the next couple of, uh, like, 20 hours or so. I know it takes forever, I'm sorry. But, uh, yeah, so we'll see you in Part 3.